Congratulations, you got your extension there. We'll all went into that, and how does it feel to have that locked up? Well, just like I said in my quote, I think that's that was the the thought and the idea and what we thought the whole time uh, when you guys were asking those questions. It was, was just not the right time to discuss that and finish that, and I was elated that I get to continue as the Oregon baseball coach, and I think the administration feels the same way, and the fact that we were able to do it before the September 11th anniversary date uh, ahead of time this time instead of the last time we were a little bit late on that uh, made it even better, I guess would be the best way to say that. How are you feeling about the team you're bringing to the field this year? Uh, we're excited. We're excited just um, basically to uh, have a response to a, a couple years that were below our standards and hopefully we can get going and add to the great young group that we had last year with another group and we start Monday, so some of those answers will about what your recruiting class like. It will probably be more accurate after we get a look at them firsthand and doing it our way and within the systems. And, but obviously, we're excited about the 17 new guys that have joined us and see if we can uh, get a ball club going that we're all very proud of. When, when you sign a new contract, do you th like do an like take an assessment of the program and where you want to see it over the next? You know, over the period of your contract, like do you, do you do any sort of kind of looking back, looking forward when you kind of do set a, a kind of a new? Obviously, you're going to be here for the next few years. Yeah, uh, as opposed to the length of the tenure of that the new contract, the sense of urgency is uh, that same evaluation. What what have we done well recently? What have we done poorly? And and most importantly, how are we going to make immediate adjustments that give us better returns? And um, you know, I, I don't think it would be realistic to say that we're going to uh, establish one of our goals results-wise that uh, coming off a year that we were 30 and 25, that we're going to win 50 games, we're going to go to the College World Series. And I'd rather have them be short-term, uh, more attainable, immediate goals rather than uh, the trap that we've fallen in and some others talking about the rooftop instead of the, the foundation blocks of what, what are we going to do about it starting Monday when we start our fall workouts and, and take that day by day and you know I'm sounding real cliche -ish right now but uh, uh, we've talked a lot about Omaha in this program up here and we haven't been able to accomplish that yet so uh, I think just a matter of being as competitive as we possibly can be that's controllable uh, that other stuff takes care of itself. Is there any more pressure then with these new goals and the new contract to perform well? To uh, goals? No, I, I mean, I always, my standards and self expectations are uh, way above anybody else's. Uh, so I don't look at it as pressure. I'm, I'm, as always, I came up here to do the best I possibly could for the University of Oregon and the baseball players here. And that hasn't changed because we've uh, come up short. Uh, as far as the winning standards, there's a lot of things I'm very proud of of this this program and the players. And uh, you know, seeing the major leaguers now, we're starting to get a little bit of a, uh, a uh, presence up there. And seeing uh, Tyler Anderson and Jimmy Scherfey pitch in the same game the other night uh, put a big smile on my face. And uh, and the controllable things as far as winning, I uh, always want to win at the highest level. So uh, each and everything that we think about, going back to Tyson's uh, question, uh, is conducive to making this team and, and organization the best it can be. I don't feel out outside influences from the administration, expectations, uh, the media. Uh, we have our own standards, and our standards are very high. Do you anticipate Nelson, Yovan as being starters or leavers? Do you have an idea yet which way they'll go? I, I don't because we'll see the whole dynamic of what our, all of our pitching staff and uh, where, where their abilities fit best and what's best for the team. Certainly, those are two great arms. Uh, Ryan Nelson was on the shelf for a little bit, but uh, had a real good summer. He's healthy. He's coming in as a viable two-way candidate, as Kenyon is. And part of that goes into that. What's best for them if they really are two-way guys and they're playing a position, not just being a DH, is starting better than relieving for them. And we've got an All-American closer 
that also, in our opinion, in Kenyon, could be an All-American starter. Uh, he's awfully good and had a good summer. And, uh, you know, quite frankly, right now, we've got a three-year journeyman uh, named Parker Kelly that we think has a chance to emerge as possibly that, that stopper for us. I hope that Parker's development continues along those lines. He did well in the Cape. Um, he probably did better in the Cape than he did in a duck uniform. And um, so if, if we're able to develop another guy like we've had a great run of closers and having the luxury of having Ryan Nelson and Kenyon Yovan in our rotation, that's a good thing for the Ducks. You got Mercer, look like he had a good summer in the Cape too. What do you see? I mean, just who are kind of the, the candidates for that starting spot if, if those guys stay in the pen? Well, I, I think everybody, Steve. I think uh, Merce, you'd pencil him in. Mm -hmm to be the most logical Friday guy because he was the Saturday guy and Petey's gone. But he's going to have to earn that, you know, and I, I've i seen uh, Matty and he looks awfully good physically, his body. Uh, he's a workout maniac as far as uh, the programs that he does and his body looks better. He had a great summer in the Cape. He's probably our highest profile draft professional guy, uh, at least in the draft eligible guys this year. And uh, I think he wants to be the Friday guy. and. I'll, I'll tell you what, if somebody beats him out, it, it would seem to me that that guy's awfully good. So I think you pencil in Matt Mercer as our Friday guy at this point. And then Saturday, Sunday become, you have a, some freshmen you can mix in there too. I mean, I saw it looks like. Yeah, uh, we, six guys, you know, there's six guys, some with better credentials than others, uh, six brand new pitchers. And, uh, you know, the hope is, and the way they were recruited is if they earn the right to be in the weekend rotation, they'll be in the weekend rotation. One of them's an Oregonian. Colby Summers that turned down some money and uh, he had a really good summer in Corvallis and uh, we think that he's going to be uh, be a guy that's in the mix in that for sure but I think all six of them want to believe that they're they're battling for that and and that's the way we recruit them everybody's got a chance what they do is uh, speaks more uh, loudly than how they were recruited. The Carranza left Dyer and McCullough those are the three guys that transferred out? Yeah we'll move on without them you still bring back offensively a lot. I mean, probably more than maybe you've had in terms of you got Matthews if he's back at first, steer at third. You've got some parts offensively, it looks like, coming back. Yeah, and we're encouraged with that, you know, and talked about the guys that left, and there's nothing we can do about that. Some probably uh, hit us a little harder than others, and but it, it's not about them. It's about the guys we have in camp, and we've got a really good nucleus in the infield with experience and guys that hit in the middle of the order. and. Um, in the catching positions, uh, something that we're going to have to look at and who's going to catch the bulk of the innings. The, the incumbent guy, returner, is Braden Stutzman, and we've recruited two, two junior college guys to battle it out with Braden on who's going to be the catcher this year. Goldfarb healthy? Yeah, he's in that mix too. Goldie's caught a little bit in the summer, and he's. He caught? Yeah. Uh, he, he likes the the idea of possibly battling in, in that position. And we know we've got a really good outfielder in Jacob Goldfarb. And, it, you know, if he can develop as a catcher, you know, that's not uh, recruiting those other guys out of there. Or, uh, but that'll give us four good choices instead of three. That's always good. We haven't, we haven't seen you since the end of last season. What did it mean for this program for uh, PD to go in the first round? Well, it's another win for the program. You know, when you're not knocking on the door uh, in regional, super regional, or postseason play and those type of things. And of course, the focus was a little bit on me, and I, I hate that. Uh, it should be more about the players and the program. And uh, the next duck coach that comes in here, regardless if his last name's Horton or not, um, it's, it's a great opportunity to, to coach at the University of Oregon. It's a real blessing. but. Uh, that's the, really the thing that we could hang our hat on the most besides the call-ups and the guys that are in the major league level. Um, BD being a first round draft choice is a, another win in the program. We know that we're part of that vehicle uh, that David had that potential when he came in here and for him to reach that potential is a really good thing instead of the other way around. Obviously, you got some Fullerton guys that have been up in the bigs, but as more and more Oregon guys get up there, does that help recruiting-wise for you to show the kind of guys you develop? Yeah, I think so. You know, that as uh, prospective uh, Duck players look at the program, they look at a lot of things, and when everything else is equal and you can point to the development and the, the guys in the big leagues, that's that's another plus, and that should be 
one of those boxes they check off. Can, can I reach my ultimate goals after college if I choose the University of Oregon? And the more guys you have up there, the better, I think, with that. George, is there still a lot of recruiting interest then after the drop-off? As far as guys that were getting to commit to us? Yeah, 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 yeah. Uh, you know, um, I would like to think that, and I think they, uh, the recruits still trust my coaching staff and myself. Um, I think last spring was a little challenging for all of us. Uh, well, I, should, I, I so I'm not going to say that. I'm going to retract that because the Beavers seemed to deal with the amount of rain that we had to deal with in a pretty positive way until the very end. So, um, yeah, I, I think there's just as much excitement with this particular group, and they have some of the same goals and. We're not backing off on what our ultimate standard is and winning a Pac-12 championship. Caster needs to become kind of like, I mean, he's a guy who can hit at the top. He had a good average last year. He's been leadership-wise. Is that kind of a guy that needs to be kind of a building block for this group on yeah. and off? Yeah. That goes without saying. And what a tremendous year he had and went out in the Cape and played in the Cape All-Star game. And he's a guy that could play any of the infield positions very effectively and be a good defender, plus uh, his offensive numbers. Uh, were unlike any others that we saw, except for maybe Healy in this program so far. So uh, I don't want to put too much burden on Kyle because he is a leader. And, uh, you know, maybe I guess uh, the thing that he could improve on is get a little stronger so some of those warning track blows he actually go over the fence instead of coming up short. Is he still a walk on? Uh, no, he's on money now. Did so, he get some money yeah, on? we're proud to announce. <laughs>